A very warm welcome, everyone. My name is Akansha Pandey, and currently I'm working as an assistant professor in IMT College of Pharmacy. Today, I'm here to deliver my lecture on the topic of transdermal drug delivery system, which is also a part of NDDS, Novel Drug Delivery System. So moving forward, before anything, I would like to introduce the content I'm going to uh, just cover in this lecture or uh, the topics I'm going to cover, deliver in this lecture. Okay. Moving forward, first, I would like to introduce the content what I'm going to deliver. First is introduction, what the term exactly in DD, uh, TDS and next is classification. Then next is generation, advantage, disadvantages and the limits of the TDS, transdermal drug delivery system. Okay. First, I would like to introduce the what the term exactly transdermal or trans, what is transdermal. Okay. A transdermal patch is a medicated adhesive Patch that is placed on the skin to deliver a specific dose of a medication through the skin. Okay, is it is a kind of patch that has the medicated placed on it, and through the uh, skin, it just uh, will just deliver the drug into the bloodstream. Okay, this is the human skin. Here we have we used to place the uh, patch, and through uh, skin, it just uh, delivered to the bloodstream. Okay. Moving forward, what is transdermal drug delivery system? Transdermal drug delivery system has made an important contribution to medical practice, but has yet to fully achieve its potential as an alternative to oral drug delivery and hypodermic injections. Okay. Now moving forward, what are the classification? Polymer membrane permeation control. Next is polymer matrix diffusion control. Third uh, classification is drug reservoir gradient control and fourth is micro reservoir dissolution control. Okay. Moving forward, what are the generations? What are the, uh, on the basis of generations, the development, na? So on the first generation, uh, first we having the first generation transdermal delivery system. Next we have having second generation transdermal delivery system. And third, we have having third generation delivery system. See what is there now? On the basis of development, the different generation of transdermal delivery system is there, okay? Moving forward, what is the first and first generation transdermal delivery system? The first generation, of transdermal delivery system is responsible for most of the transdermal patches that have thus far been in clinical use. Okay, the first generation is ap approach to the transdermal delivery is limited primarily by the barrier posed by skin, outermost layer, and stratum corneum, which is 10 to 20 micrometer thick. Okay, the first generation we are having the um, patches or the you can say the transdermal patches that is having 10 to 20 uh, micrometer thickness, okay? And that has a very limited, uh, you can say the barrier or kind of uh, activity for the skin or the uh, kind of barrier crossing uh, capacity. That's why it is just a hold, uh, hold the position of first generation transdermal system. Okay, in second generation transdermal, uh, transdermal system, the system recognized that skin permeability enhancement is needed to expand the scope of transdermal drug. Okay, as, as we have uh, invented a first uh, generation transdermal delivery system, it came uh, out so that uh, we need to just enhance the permeability system. We uh, uh, kind of permeability or the kind of delivery we are going to deliver the drug in the bloodstream. We just need to uh, improve them. Okay, in second generation of the uh, delivery system has advanced clinical practice primarily by improving small molecule delivery for localized dermatological, cosmetic, and some systematic applications, but has made little impact on delivery of micromolecules. So what we have done in the second generation of delivery system, uh, transdermal delivery system, we have introduced the molecular delivery, that is micromolecules. We have just uh, used them in cosmetic things, dermatological treatments we have used micromolecule system that's why it is considered as the second generation transdermal delivery system okay and according to second generation transdermal delivery system the ideal enhancer should be increased skin permeability by reversibly disrupting stratum corneum structure okay jo skin ki permeability thi permeability thi wo increase hui thi aur bina kisi cheez ko disrupt kiye ho Okay, provide an additive driving force for transportation and transport into the uh, skin, avoid injury to deeper living tissue. Okay, as we have seen, sometimes we used to place the patch, the area uh, beside where the patch is placed 
is something different like rest of the skin. So the for the ideal um, transdermal uh, patches or in the second generation, this was the main point that we need to avoid the injury in the tissues or the anything that is deeper in the skin that shouldn't be uh, damaged, okay? For the third generation transdermal delivery system, the system is poised to make significant impact on drug delivery because it targets its effect to the stratum corneum. It was a kind of targeted, okay? In third generation, we have invented the targeted transdermal patches. This targeting enables strong disruption of the stratum corneum barium barrier and thereby more effective transdermal delivery while still protecting the deeper tissue. We have advanced our preparation, our uh, delivery system, our transdermal patches so that it wouldn't harm the deeper tissues. Also, um, be very effective, more effective than the first and the second generation. So we have just improved our patches in a third generation that would not uh, uh, just any kind of effect to the tissue or damage to the tissue, but be more effective than first and second generation of transdermal delivery system. So, okay, moving forward, these are the advantages See, if we are having invented uh, any kind of delivery system or any kind of drug or any kind of formulation, that should have the advantages. So it reduced first pass metabolism effect in GI incompatibility, sustain therapeutic drug levels, permit, se permit self-administration. Okay, it was very uh, to, uh, major point that we can use it by self. Okay, non-invasive, no needles or injections are needed over there. Improve patient compliance. Patients are very friendly. Patients would be very okay to just use these kind of uh, deliveries or this is kind of uh, uh, medications or treatments. Okay. Reduce side effect. That is also a big point that transdermal patches having a kind of minimize to minimize side effect, okay? Allows removal of drug sources, long acting drug delivery. It is the kind of a, a drug delivery system which act for the long time, okay? And if we talk about the disadvantages, daily dose of more than 10 mg is not possible, okay? We are having only patch now. So we can't uh, deliver more than 10 mg of the drug to any kind of uh, patches. Local irritation is the major problem, okay? If we have placed something on the skin, there may be just chances of local irritation. This would be uh, not uh, in case of every person, but in case of some persons, there this major uh, disadvantage has been detected. Drug requiring high blood level for unsuitable drug with long half-life cannot be formulated in TDDS. Okay. See, what happened in the TDDS is transdermal drug delivery system. We just can't uh, make any kind of drug in this kind of delivery system. We are having a very limited and a particular uh, kind of drugs that we can convert into the transdermal drug delivery system. So uh, drug which are having the long half-life we just can't formulate that drug in the TDDS, okay? Uncomfortable to wear. Sometimes it becomes uncomfortable. So as I already have mentioned that it uh, creates the major or minor problem, local irritation problems, okay? May not be economical. Sometimes it may not be economical because uh, sometimes it gets biodegradable. Sometimes it's not, okay? Barrier function change from the person to person and within the same person, okay? If we talk about the barrier function is the how and in how much time or how the drug is just penetrating in your bloodstream. Okay? So it would be changed from person to person or within the person. Maybe on your uh, hand skin, the barrier permission or barrier function is different on the leg uh, region. It's different. Okay, It may be uh, changed from person to person or within the person it would also be fluctuating. Heat, cold, sweating, and showering prevent the patch from sticking to the surface. Okay, as we all know, if your skin is wet, the patch wouldn't be uh, survive for the long time. Okay, so it uh, just need a kind of number of patches to apply daily, or sometimes in a day we need one more, more than one time one patch. Okay. Okay, moving forward, what are the limitations? Limited skin permeability, significant length time. Cannot be used for the larger molecules as already I have uh, mentioned that in second generation, we have just used macro molecules. But in case of large molecules, it wouldn't be possible to deliver our TDDS system. Okay, Restricted for the potent drugs, 
skin irritation allergic responses so if we have get the number of responses regarding the ttds that we are they have noticed the local irritation and the skin allergy symptoms over the area we have introduced the patches TDDS type on the basis of mechanism. On the basis of mechanism, TDDS having the five, six different types, solution in matrix, suspension in continuous matrix, suspension in porous matrix, solution upstream of membrane, suspension upstream of membrane, and the last one is laminated membrane downstream. These are the kind of mechanism on the basis of, uh, these are the kind of TDDS, transdermal drug delivery system on the basis of their mechanism. Okay, moving forward, what are the real uh, drug release mechanisms? They are the basically I have introduced two inotrophoresis and electrophoration. Inotrophoresis is an electrochemical method that enhances the transportation of same some solute molecules by creating a potential grade, gradient through the skin with an applied electric current on wall paste. Okay? And in case of electroporation, it is a method of from where high voltage electric pulse supply to the skin. Okay, it's a kind of chemical reaction or chemical uh, electrochemical method where the uh, skin just uh, work uh, the permeation on the skin works in different methods like ion porosis and electrophoresis. Okay, basically, I want to introduce the ion porosis non invasive needle free it's a kind of. Uh, mechanism, rapid onset and caution kinetic control, programmable and titrable drug delivery system capabilities that they're having, ability to provide smooth, variable or bolus plasma level, singly or in combination, all in single delivery system. Okay, we are having the ability to uh, kind of needle free, pain free uh, kind of treatment and Sometimes we used to uh, deliver the combination of drug in the single transdermal drug delivery system. Enhanced transdermal drug delivery for a broad range of compounds, including large drug molecules such as peptides and oligonucleotides. oligonucleotides. Minimal variability in the delivery profile among patients and body sites. Potential for enhanced patient completion and control. Okay. Uh, for the patient, it's very... Uh, kind of uh, patients are very okay with the kind of these kind of uh, delivery system because they don't need any kind of second person if they want they will, then only they uh, call the persons if they don't want they can just use it by their self only okay what are the evaluation parameters physical parameters would be there evaluation of adhesive if we take about the in vitro testing in vivo assessment cutaneous metabolism test over there stability testing evaluation of skin reactions skin pe kya -kya reactions and that would be also the part of evaluation of adhesive or you can say the transdermal patches what are the factors that really affects the transdermal uh, permeability we have categorized the three parameters First is physiochemical pro uh, properties for the penetrants, that is partition coefficient, pH condition, penetration density. Okay, if we talk about the physiochemical properties of physiochemical factors that uh, affects the transpodermal permeability, first is the partition coefficient, second is the pH condition, and third is the penetration, how the penetrate, uh, how the drug is penetrating to the skin. Next one is physicochemical properties of drug delivery system. First, we have talked about the penetration trend. Okay. Next is drug delivery system. Release character characteristics. Second is composition of drug delivery system. Third is enhancement of the transdermal penetration. Okay. First is how the, the release is acting. How does it uh, releasing in the skin? Second is composition. How the compo we are using drug delivery. What kind of components we are using in the drug delivery. What kind of combination we are using. Okay. Third is enhancement of transport uh, transdermal penetration. What we are, what are the factors that are enhancing the transdermal penetration? How the drug is penetrating into the bloodstream. And the third is physiological and pathological condition of the skin. It uh, it also a big factor that how your skin is exactly uh, is your skin is good for the transdermal or not. Okay. The first is reservoir effect of horny layer and the lipid film. Okay. If we talk about the transdermal, the basic point is where we are using exactly these kind of uh, delivery system for the first is in pectoris. Next, smoking. Uh, if we talk about the person who is very addicted to the smoking, we just use nicotine patches. Okay. 
contraceptive, anti-emetic, anti-inflammatory, and then in the cosmetic or dermatologist. So what are the conclusions for the whole transdermal deliveries due to the recent advances in, advances in technology and the incorporation of drug to the side of infection without rupturing the skin membrane? Transdermal route is becoming the most widely accepted route of administration. As already I have uh, mentioned that it is very okay for the patients that they can use by their self only. And the technology we have advances or the kind of technology we are using and the kind of uh, methods we are advancing in the transdermal drug system. This is very good or very acceptable for the patients that they can use the, these kind of drug deliveries by themselves only. It promises to the eliminate needle for the administration of a wide variety of drug in the future. It, I already have said that this is needle free. Okay, so these kind of uh, drug delivery system is very convenient for the patient. They just don't want uh, any kind of needle procedure in their treatment. So it can eliminate the needle administration procedure in the future. Uh, treatment methods. Okay, to optimize these drug delivery system, great understanding of different mechanism of biological interactions and polymer adequate for these kind of deliver uh, transdermal kind of drug deliveries. Huh? It is very important that we need to understand the mechanism of biological interaction plus the polymer we are using. Okay, TDDS is a realistic part. Uh, practical application as a next generation of drug delivery system. It promises as a particular that. Uh, TDDS is the next generation kind of drug delivery system that uh, uh, in future it may replace many kind of drug delivery system. It is very convenient for the patient to use them by themselves only. Okay, so this is for the today. Uh, I would like to thank you that uh, for the lectures and thank you.